Have you ever wondered about YouTube names? I mean, honestly, some of the names out there are just completely random. I mean, if your channel has your name in it, or the general theme of the channel, then it's pretty understandable, right? But I'm talking about those channels whose names are completely random and don't make any sense whatsoever without being explained to the viewer. But, um, Bryce, don't you have one of those channels? Yes, yes I do. <laughs> then why are you complaining about other people's YouTube names? I'm not complaining, I'm just trying to come up with an interesting intro here. Now hang on any of you guys out there. Trust me, I love you guys. Um, after all, I'm one of those channels too, so. back to this caboodle nonsense that we call our family vlog. How are you all doing this fine day? I hope that you guys are having the best day ever, and if you aren't having the best day ever, then make it the best day ever. Look for those good things in life, because there's always something to be happy about. I can't believe all the support that you guys are giving to this vlog. It really makes me happy to read all of your comments saying how much you're enjoying the videos. Keep on commenting, I'll try to get to as many of them as possible since there's so few. So this vlog is going to be a little bit different than some of our normal vlogs. We thought that rather than sharing one of our adventures, we would instead explain why we're vlogging in the first place, uh, which is kind of an adventure in itself. So I've been thinking about doing this video for a little bit now, and it felt like it was as good a time as any to do it. So without further ado, here's our story about why we started the vlog. For me to fully explain why I started the vlog, we have to go back to February of 2017, where I was going to school in Arlington, Virginia. The end of the first semester had arrived, and there were all these projects and tests and quizzes, and I was going crazy. I remember coming home each day from track practice, and being swamped with tons of homework. And on top of that, I had all these tests and quizzes and due dates coming up in the next couple weeks, and I was just kind of freaking out a little bit. You're freaking me out. And on top of that, I wasn't getting a ton of sleep because I'd stay up late studying and doing homework, and then I'd go to sleep and wake up at five o'clock the next morning to go to early morning seminary. So I just kind of felt tired all the time. So I was tired mentally, physically, and emotionally from all the stress that was put on me. And throughout it all, there were four things that helped keep me sane and grounded, and those were family, faith, friends, and the Gray family. Now you might be wondering, who are the Grays? Well, to explain that, I'll have to do another flashback. Ooh. Um, Bryce, you know they can't see your flashback, right? Sorry. <laughs> so back in fourth grade, when I was about 10 years old, I had an obsession. And in my opinion, it was a healthy obsession. I fell in love with Studio C. So many of you probably have already heard of Studio C. The whole premise of their channel is to provide family-friendly comedy. And I immediately fell in love with them. I loved their content and uh, they were all supernaturally funny. So Studio C is a pretty large channel right now. They're approaching 2 million subscribers, which is crazy because I was there when they were at season one and they had no budget. But that didn't matter to my little 10 year old mind. I instantly became Studio C's biggest fan. I would wake up at 5 in the morning to watch their new episodes air on BYU TV. Um, I shared it with all my friends and then word quickly flew through the school and everyone knew about the new show Studio C. I still like to think that that's one of my greatest accomplishments. Bro, that, that's just sad. Get out. Hello darkness, my old friend. Anyways, I'm getting a little bit sidetracked here. The whole reason I even shared that story is to share how big of a fan I am of Studio C. So, to reroute here, I'm going to explain how that relates to my little freshman struggles. One of the cast members of Studio C is named Jason Gray. He's known for being the guy who's really good at impressions and also takes the physical hit for the team a lot. He's like the punching bag. Except for that one sketch where Matt Meese was repeatedly hit in the face over and over and over and over again, which is still their most viral video to date. Scott Sterling! Ouch. <laughs> wow, sorry, I got sidetracked one more time. Let's reroute. <laughs> anyway, so Jason was always my second favorite cast member. Sorry, Matt still takes the cake. Um, he's so naturally funny, and he's just a great person overall. And now we'll tie him into my freshman crisis. So I remember one day, I came home from school from doing a track workout. I was completely exhausted. Uh, we were doing mile repeats, actually, and that was not fun. 
And then on top of that, I had all this schoolwork and tests and studying, and I was just exhausted. So naturally, I turned to the Zen of Studio C. I watched maybe one or two Studio C videos, and those were great, but then this video popped up in the suggestions box about somebody who had TP'd the house of some Studio C cast members. And I was like, who would do that? These guys are basically famous on the internet, and you would TP their house? So I was intrigued. I instantly clicked on that video. So the video popped up and I sat there watching and I soon found out that this was the family blog of Jason Gray. And I was quickly introduced to his wife Jenny and his daughter Alice and I automatically fell in love with their family. I laughed as Jenny kept on trying to throw the toilet paper over the tree but she wasn't successful and it kept on falling down. I smiled as sweet little Alice was singing in the back of their car on their TP date night adventure. And I smiled as I thought about how uh, Stacy, Adam, and Matt would wake up the next morning and see a bunch of toilet paper dangling from their tree. I instantly was on board with their channel. They were the first people who really told me that family vlogging was a thing. I had no clue beforehand. And from there, I was introduced to vloggers like Eight Passengers, or J House Vlogs, or my personal favorite right now, Sunshine Mafia. Shout out to Sunshine Mafia, spread sunshine! Spread sunshine! And then I remember after watching Amazing Grace for about two months, this idea popped into my head, which was kind of crazy. And that was, you should start vlogging. Bum, bum, bum! It seemed like a crazy idea, like sailing the seven seas on a toboggan or flying a helicopter under the sea. Remember, I'd only been exposed for vlogging for about two months at this point. I didn't have any of the fancy gear or editing software. I didn't know how to shoot video. I didn't even know where to start, to be honest. I took this crazy idea and shoved it in the deepest, darkest, farthest away corner of my mind so as to never have to experience it again. But somehow it kept on popping up. Every time I'd watch Amazing Grays, or we do something fun as a family together, this idea kept on nagging at the back of my head. So eventually, I came to the conclusion that I had to follow this prompting to see what would come of it. Then a short while later, Brenna came along. She's one of my good friends from back in Virginia. Shout out to you guys if you're still watching the vlogs. I don't see why you still be watching because I left y'all like six months ago. But good job anyways. So I was taking a road trip up to Palmyra, New York with a bunch of my friends. And I was sitting next to Brenna on the bus we were talking about the usual summer, sports, future plans, all that fun stuff. And then somehow out of the blue, my random idea about vlogging came up. And to my surprise, she didn't judge me or think I was weird in any way, shape, or form. In fact, she even stole my phone and proceeded to take three gigabytes worth of footage on that bus with a bunch of her friends. Yeah, I might share this first official vlog with you guys. Let me know what you think in the poll up. So from this experience, I now felt this responsibility to start the vlog. I had a friend depending on me to do it and I wasn't about to let her down. So this trip coincidentally was the second to last week of our time inside the DC area. And that was right before we were gonna move to Tijuana, Mexico because of my dad's job. So while we were up in Palmyra, I made a plan. Don't you mean Tijuana? get out of here. So I decided that I would start out making our vlog by documenting our trip from the DC area all the way to Tijuana, Mexico. It wasn't much of a plan, but it was a start. Now I had something, a goal to follow and stick to. So I started out by making a video of our pack out. That was my very absolute first vlog. Uh, it's probably the vlog that I'll cringe most to, to be honest, just because of how terrible it is. So if you want to see me make a fool of myself, go ahead and check out that vlog. So moving day came, and I decided to record little parts of our drive across the country. Though I know at the time that crossing state boundaries isn't exactly the most exciting thing. Oh well. Um, but I kept on vlogging for the 10 day period of time until we arrived down here inside Tijuana, Mexico. Tijuana, bro! Once here, I started editing and uploading our videos into our new YouTube channel called Chase and Five. Our name comes from the idea that our parents are chasing us five kids around the globe with our frequent international moves. Somehow over a crazy series of events, this seemingly out there idea about vlogging had become a reality. I was now a vlogger. How on earth did that happen? So there you have it. Super long story short, I've continued editing, recording, and uploading our vlogs ever since that first week, and I've learned so much. 
Um, I now feel more comfortable in front of the camera and I've learned how to make my vlogs more meaningful and more interesting for you, the viewers. And here we are now at 87 subscribers in slightly more than four months since making our first video public for everyone to see. And I can't believe how fast it's gone. You guys made the difference. Thank you so much. I hope that you guys enjoyed this story about the seemingly miraculous beginning of our vlog. Miraculous! So there's one other thing that I was hoping to share in this vlog. I've been thinking for a while now about making a channel motto. And I spoke with each of my siblings about it and they all came up with the same motto that first popped up into my head. So our motto is pretty simple, but it has profound meaning behind it. And that is, let's make today the best day ever. Woohoo! This has been a phrase that my dad has been using since I can't even remember. It's based upon the idea that any day can be the best day ever as long as you make it that way. It doesn't matter what challenges or struggles you're going through that day, you can still have the best day ever. It means you look for reasons every day to be grateful. It means you set and work toward goals. It means that you are actively living life and looking for reasons to be happy and to smile. So my challenge to all of you guys today is to make today the best day ever. You can do that by being more kind, more happy, less negative, less judgmental, more smiling, more happy. And let's make today the best day ever. Woo! Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope that you enjoyed the stories that we were able to share with you and really take this motto into heart. We love you all and appreciate your support. You guys make this worth it. Keep on liking and commenting on our videos. If you're new here and would like to see more, please be sure to click that red subscribe button down below. And we'll see you next week for another video. Chasing 5 at... Woo! Thanks for watching. <laughs>